In this tutorial, I'm quickly going to show you how to save an image you have gotten from your image picker locally onto your device so that you can later on load this image again without making use of a database externally or internally. So this is what we are going to do. We're going to pick an image first, allow access to all photos. Then we're going to select the photo and then this image is being saved to the local storage. And then when we're going to close the app and open it up again, it will load this image again from the local storage. Let's get started. The first thing we need to do is install the package path underscore provider. Simply click on here, then go to your pubspec.yaml file and paste it below the image picker library and then run pubget. Then you can import this library. Now I'm going to extend the existing code for the image picker tutorial I already did. If you haven't checked this out yet, I recommend you to watch it before you watch this tutorial because you need to know how this app basically works for you to understand what I'm going to explain now. So I'll keep it very simple, this explanation here. So we have a column of different buttons where we can pick an image or open up the camera to get a photo or pick a video or capture a video or pick multiple images. And we use the pick image button, for example, for simply using our image picker library and then say pick image. And then this returns us an X file. And if this image is not null, then we are going to set our global variable picked file, which is going to be shown below the buttons. And this picked file is also an X file variable. Now what I did for this tutorial is extend this function simply by another function called save image. Wherever you see these comments here with extended, that means I just extended from the previous tutorial with the additional code here. So as mentioned here, I imported the library. Also, I wrote the init function where whenever the app starts, we load the image if it's available from the local storage. And these are the two functions I'm going to explain to you now. So first we use the path provider package function, which is get application documents directory. We have to await this first. This has to execute beforehand. That's why I put this into parentheses because the result of this will give us a directory as you can see a future directory. And then from this directory, we can get the path variable, which returns the path as a string. Also, we're going to convert the image we picked from the image picker to a normal file. Then we need to define the file name we want to save it as. In this case, I made it very simple. So this is not ideal because it's always the same name. If you want to save multiple images to your local storage, then of course you wouldn't use the same name over and over again because every time you save the image, you would override it with another image. But for simplicity, I just use the same name. What you could do, for example, is saving the file name, the image name in your database for each image or with shared preferences. But this is out of the scope of this tutorial. So that's why I'm just using this hard coded name. Then simply with the file we defined earlier, we can then just say copy and then use the path we got up here and then forward slash and then the file name. And this will then save this image file to the local storage. That's all we have to do for saving the image. And now for loading the image, again, we need the file name. Then again, we need the path for the local storage. And first I'm checking if this file exists. So here I'm saying exists sync because this is doing it synchronously. You could also say exists without the sync, but then you would have to await this first because this is then done asynchronously. For simplicity, I just named it like this. And if this file exists, then we can get this file from the local storage and I'm directly converting it to an X file again so that we can directly assign it to our picked file global variable and then set the state to update our UI. And this is then basically how it looks whenever you start the app again, where you just have the image then directly loaded from the local storage. I hope you liked this tutorial. Please leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them down below in the comments. Thank you for watching.